Good morning. I'm in my outdoor office again. Just a beautiful Wednesday morning, sort of warm out here. A Bigfoot mug. Uh, <clears throat> so for, I guess, maybe three weeks, four weeks, I'm gonna venture off and do something a little different. Um, I'm gonna, over the next several weeks, pardon me, I've got to let the boss out with the cat. Um, over the next several weeks, I'm gonna be looking at various things which um, sometimes we might hear people say or we might see referred to on TV that um, we may wanna believe, but which actually aren't Christian. Um, <clears throat> which may be elements of other belief systems, other faiths, but they ain't Christian. Um, so, for, I think hopefully this will be interesting for us. So for today, <clears throat> and the first one of these said, well, that ain't Christian. It's reincarnation. Um, like I said, you hear, you can hear a lot of people refer to, um, I believe this, I believe that, I saw something on TV, and that's fine, you can believe whatever you want, but they actually um, aren't Christian. And that's exactly the same here with reincarnation. So, what is reincarnation? Excuse me, just a second. Reincarnation itself is basically this. It's the idea that souls can migrate from one person to another. Um, <clears throat> and so you, you have your life, and after you die, your soul can come back in at another time in another person or in the body of an animal. That is reincarnation. Um, and there are a couple of things that run afoul of normal Christian thought with that. Um, normal Judeo Christian thought doesn't have that stark a distinction between body and soul. Um, normal Judeo Christian thought were more whole people. Um, and the other is. Um, that we, when you die, that's it. So one is with reincarnation, it's the idea that souls migrate from one body to another. You, you die and your soul can come back as another person or in the body of a, of a dog or a cockroach or, or a bull or anything. Um, reincarnation is also closely closely linked with the idea of karma. Essentially what goes around comes around. So with karma, if you if you are good, if you believe in good in karma, if you are good, good things are going to happen to you. Um, if you do good to other people, that's going to be returned, repaid in some way in this life. Um, what goes around comes around. Um, if <clears throat> if you pay for somebody's meal at the drive through line at Chick-fil-A on Tuesday, then somebody is going to do something nice for you on Thursday. Um, and related to that, and that relates to reincarnation in that the more good you do in this life, the better off, the more likely you are to come back in a next life in a better form. You don't want to come back in the next life as a cockroach. Um, you want to come back in the next life as, as a better type of person. Excuse me. Um, reincarnation is um, also, in a way, linked with some parts of Plato's thought. 
um, reincarnation. You find elements of that in um, in Buddhism, in Hinduism, and like I said, some elements of Plato's thought, some some parts of Gnosticism, which was an ancient Christian heresy. So obviously there may be something missing with that. It is found in Hinduism, Buddhism, um, some of Plato's thought, and some Christian heresies, particularly Gnosticism. What's missing there? Well, Jesus is missing there. Um, uh, sometimes a person may believe that he or she has been somewhere before you go somewhere and you just, I believe I've been here before and that's all right um, there can be any number of things that might give you that might make you think I've been here before um, in the, in the, in George Patton the famous World War two general was well known for believing in reincarnation he was convinced that he had been been that he had participated in any number of famous campaign military campaigns throughout history and um, in visiting ancient battlefields and he was a, a real student of military history and sometimes visiting ancient battlefields he described the battles as if he had been there. Um, and that's all well and good. I mean, you, he can believe whatever he wants to believe or could believe whatever he wanted to believe. But there is a problem. And the problem is, well, it ain't Christians. It's simply not in the Bible. Um, a person can believe anything he or she wants to. Um, you can see all sorts of things on TV described, but that doesn't necessarily make them Christian. Um, so two things to point out in relation to um, in relation to reincarnation. Um, reincarnation in the Bible. Um, one is uh, reincarnation slash karma sort of undercuts any notion of grace. Um, grace is the golden cord throughout all the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, it is the golden cord. Our access to God is only through grace, period. Um, our favor with God is only through grace, and we, it is never, ever something that we earn. And karma undercuts that. Karma is all about if you do good, good is going to happen to you. That's not grace. That's not Christian. I, um, a couple years ago, I, on a Wednesday morning, I talked about karma a little bit. Um, so reincarnation is linked to karma, and they both really undercut any notion of grace. Pardon me while the big truck missing the muffler goes by. The other thing with the reincarnation is this. It points to a, a circular view of history. Many cultures in history and around the world have had a for lack of a better term a circular view of history cyclical view of history and it's almost understandable if you think about the cycle of seasons summer leads to fall to winter to spring and then we're back to summer again and so it's not un, not surprising, shouldn't be surprising that many cultures have had sort of a cyclical or circular view of history. Um, Judeo-Christian thought does not buy that. Um, there's a wonderful book <clears throat> called The Gifts of the Jews. And the premise of the book, cannot remember, Brian Cahill, I think, is the name of the author. 
Um, and the premise of the book is that the great gift of Judaism to the human thought is the idea that history has a beginning and an end. That history begins with creation and creation is that God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And history is going somewhere. It's linear and it's going somewhere. And it ends with the day of the Lord. Or as we Christians would have it, it ends with the return of Jesus Christ to establish a permanent kingdom on earth. Um, beginning and end. And within that, there's not a, there's there's not room for um, there's not room for reincarnation. You come back again and again and again. Um, <clears throat> also, there are any number of statements in the Bible which tell us that. Um, well, once you die, that's it. And most famously, Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, judgment. Which is pretty cut and dried. Um, that's not the only place, but that's the most explicit. It is there that we, we live and we die. And that's, and that's that. Um, so we can read about people thinking they've been somewhere we can watch a TV show and someone is convinced I was here, I was there in another life and like I said you can believe whatever you want but that doesn't necessarily make it comport with with biblical Christianity um, there's no statement of Jesus at all which tends to lead which would tend to lead us toward reincarnation the early church fathers were aware of it and unanimously condemned it. Um, so there are lots and lots of things that we can believe. You can believe anything. I can believe that the moon is made of green cheese. That doesn't make it accurate. I can believe that um, I can believe that the world is flat. That doesn't make it accurate. And I could believe in reincarnation, but that doesn't make it true and doesn't make it Christian. Um, so with that, I hope that you have a great rest of your Wednesday.